Can a sub $200 Ender 3 completely stock out of the box compete with a $700 Bamboo Labs PS1? Let's print a couple Chep Cubes and find out right here at Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. This video is also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. If you go on Amazon.com, you can still buy an original Ender 3 for $168 in this listing. And there's been over 2,000 sold in the past month alone. Now I say that's an original Ender 3. Well, the true original Ender 3 had an 8-bit microcontroller on its circuit board. These new ones have a 32-bit microcontroller, so it's easier to update the firmware and it just runs better. So does that mean people are crazy or just don't know what they're doing when they buy one of these on Amazon? Well, if you go on Facebook or you go on Twitter X, you're going to get people to tell you, no, 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 buy this. This is the best machine to get started with. And they're not really wrong because this is one heck of a machine. This is the Bamboo P1S. I really like it. It prints fast. It prints good. But it's $700. This is under $200. You could buy three of these, some extra filaments, some tools to work on it, and still be under what you're going to spend in this. So it comes down to how much can you afford to spend. And also, what is it that you're going to print? If you're just getting started, you want to print a bunch of trinkets and just learn how to 3D print, why invest $700 when you can learn if you even like it for under $200? And when you're done, if you want to upgrade to something like this, you can easily sell this on eBay or keep it as a second printer. So it's not crazy to start off with one of these. But always the question is, can it print as good as this thing? I mean, it's $700. This prints really good. How does this compare? Well, it's not really the printer. It's the slicer. It's the software that takes your 3D file and turns it into the G code that you can put on the SD card and print it from the machine. That's the key. People will upgrade these. They'll spend money on putting better extruders and better hot ends. They'll tell you you need this better motors. There's just a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm not saying in certain circumstances that doesn't help you if you're printing a certain type of material. So it's good to know about it. But out of the box, I'm going to show you that this thing can print almost as good as this for less than one third the price. Now, I have been told that some schools are requiring people to buy an Ender 3 because they want them to learn how to put it together, how to tune it, learn all the basics of 3D printing. And you can do that at an affordable budget, especially on a school budget. Well, this machine is actually an Ender 3 Pro. And the only real difference between this and the original Ender 3 is the width of this arm that supports the bed. This one is twice as wide as the original, and this is actually more common than the Ender 3. You can find this one on Amazon and all places as well, and it sells a lot of units. But other than that, this machine is completely stock. I haven't changed anything. I haven't even updated the firmware. It's got the original hot end, the original extruder. It's even got the original bed that's getting worn out. It's a magnetic bed. So I'm going to print on this thing. I'm going to print my Chep Cube. This is a very basic print. It prints really quick, but it's got detail in it that you can determine whether it's printing right or not. Things like the corners. Are the corners sharp? Are the letters sagging when it prints? How are the edges? Are they pretty smooth? What about the, the other letters at certain points where it's sagging? Is there little blobs dripping because it didn't cool from the cooling fan enough? All that is controlled by settings in the slicer. And this Chep Cube, which is has my Chep symbol on it, I designed this for this reason. I recessed these letters just enough so you can test overhang on a low-cost printer. Now, if you're one of those 2,000 people or more who have bought one of these, don't feel like you're all alone because I have been using this style printer for years, and I've made all kinds of videos how to set it up, how to level your bed, how to tune it, how to maybe improve it or change things for different situations. I've got a bunch of videos and they're all in a playlist that I'll link to right up here. But like I said, the most important thing is getting the slicing right. And what you want is a good profile to slice your file so you get good prints out of this machine. And I give that away for free. I have links in the description below for my profiles 
for version 5.0 or above of Cura. Now, these printers come with their own slicer. It's based on Cura, but I highly recommend that you get the actual version of Cura and then download my profiles. You can get them for free from thangs.com. Like I said, link in the description below. You have to register at thangs.com, it's free, but then you can download them and then bring them into Cura and use those for your slicing profile. And I'm gonna use one of those. I'm gonna use my, my good profile. It's not the best, but a good one, a 0.2 layer height, which is the layer height of the filament, how high this thing moves up and lays the next layer. So I'm gonna try that, and then I'm gonna print the same thing on this Bamboo P1S using their slicer, which is their own slicer, which is based on the Prusa slicer, which is a very good slicer. Well, they've tuned that slicer to work with this, which is one of the reasons people say this is a good place to start. You have to do a little more effort to bring my profiles into Cura and download Cura, but you can get really good results. And Cura is free, my profiles are free, so it's not costing you any more money. But that's what you're getting for the $700 if they've done some of that work for you. So let's compare the two results on the Chep Cube using the different profiles. Here's the two end results, the P1S on the left, the Ender 3 on the right. P1S was sliced with the bamboo slicer that comes with the printer. The Ender 3 was sliced with Cura and my profile. So it's a little bit different, but it's the same exact plastic. So you can see there's not a major difference between the two. So this is the Cura slicer where you would slice the file and once you slice it, it says 29 minutes to print. Now that doesn't include it homing and heating up, so your total time is going to be around 35-36 minutes. Where on the P1S, if you go into its slicer, the bamboo slicer, it says it's going to be 21 minutes total time, so 15 minutes of print time. So you're looking at almost half the time compared to these two. And as the prints get bigger, that's a significant savings. That could be anywhere from 10 hours on the under three to less than six hours on the P1S. So now that we know the P1S is a lot faster, let's look at them side by side at each point. This is still shot. Again, there's not a major difference between these two, but the fact that the P1S printed it in almost half the time is really impressive. So as long as you're not worried about speed, you can still get good quality out of the Ender 3. Now maybe you're still shopping, you're still not ready to buy a 3D printer, but you wanna try out 3D printing, you got something that you wanna get printed. That's where PCBWay.com comes in. They not only make circuit boards, but they can do professional 3D printing. You upload your file to them, they will slice it, they will print it, and they will ship it back to you, and it is high quality. This is big money machines they're using to print for you. So it's a way to get 3D prints without even buying a 3D printer. So check out PCBWay.com. Now, if you're still shopping for a 3D printer and your budget is under $200, don't forget there are improved Ender 3s. This is the Ender 3 V3 SE. This is their latest low cost printer. It's got some nice features, direct drive, auto level, auto Z offset, better bed material, and it's less of a kit, it goes together really quick. I've got some videos on this to show you the features and you can get this a lot of places for under $200. I think it's slightly over $200 on Amazon, but it's a very good option. But don't let anyone tell you you made a mistake by buying one of these or if a school is forcing you to buy this one instead of something else, you can learn so much from this printer. You really can. I still love it and as I showed, it can print really good. This one, you can use my profiles on that as well. So anything you learn here, you could buy a second one and get this and still be less than that $700 printer. So don't let anyone talk you out of getting into 3D printing and make sure to have fun. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or get a membership at thangs.com. That way you get access to all my profiles and also my electronics books. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.